Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for your introduction. As you know, uh, cavitation can occur during brain therapy by thermal necrosis, and is, and consequently, in order to assess the safety and efficiency of a treatment, cavitation has to be monitored. So the first step is, um, okay, the first step is to know if there is cavitation. If no, okay, it's safe. But if there is cavitation, the second question is where it is. Okay. If the cavitation is inside the skull, you have to interrupt the treatment. But if the cavitation is outside the skull, just try to decast the coupling water more. So the question is, are we able to localize cavitation activity? The first technique to localize cavitation is cavitation mapping. It has been studied for a long time. Using several PCDs, you can record the acoustic signal from micro bubbles, and by extracting the time of flight associated to each channel, you can assess the position of micro bubbles in the three dimensional space. <coughs> and this method is really efficient, and it requires, but sorry, it's really efficient, but it requires typically more than 100 PCDs. So it's really expensive and it's difficult to integrate this in IFU probe, existing IFU system. Now, I want to introduce to you um, a second method with, with only, sorry, one PCD. We are using the harmonic content of um, the signal to binary localize cavitation activity inside or outside the skull. <coughs> if, you record, um, if you record signal from cavitation outside the skull, here is the typical spectra that you obtain with, uh, oh, can I, oh, sorry, yes, with harmonics, the subharmonic and some ultraharmonics here. And here is the spectra that you obtain from cavitation outside the skull. As you can see, uh, I, uh, harmonics are highly attenuated by the skull. So, for example, if you compute the ratio between the uh, 5 over 2 ultraharmonics over the half subharmonic, you obtain minus, uh, minus 15 decibel outside the skull and minus 30 decibel inside the skull. So you can easily find a threshold between these two values to binary localized cavitation activity. <laughs> so just the previous diagram shown a typical in vivo setup, but I worked in vitro actually. Here is the setup that I use for mimicking a thermal necrosis uh, in vitro. The first one is for cavitation outside the skull, so I only use a transducer that sonicated a cold brain sample and a PCD uh, recorded the acoustic response of micro bubble. And the second one mimics cavitation inside the skull. To do that, I, o I only add a skull sample in front of my PCD. But cavitation, as you know, is a random phenomenon. So what is the stability of the ultraharmonic ratio? We measure this ratio every 26 millisecond, millisecond during six seconds for cavitation outside the skull in red, cavitation uh, from, uh, from inside um, uh, monkey uh, skull, sorry, in uh, blue and from human skull in green. And uh, you, you can note that uh, there, this ratio are stable enough to find a threshold between cavitation inside and outside the skull. So finally, in order to assess the efficiency of our test, we evaluated its sensitivity and specificity. In vitro, it works perfectly. It is possible to find threshold to obtain uh, simultaneously 100% in sensitivity and specificity. But to go further, no, we will need to reproduce this test in vivo. Okay, finally, 
uh, what are the pros and cons of mapping and binary localization. Mapping is efficient, but expensive and not easy for upgrading an IFU system. On the other hand, binary localization is efficient, even if it's only binary, yeah. and, but it requires only one PCD, so it's really inexpensive and it's easy for upgrading an IFU problem. Okay, thank you for your attention.